Hello, thanks for joining me again. Today, I'll be running through adding charts onto tables and ultimately creating dashboards to embed uh, into model-driven apps. This is quite a common request uh, that you'll get from a number of business users. Reason being, they want to see their data, but they want, it, they want to see it being brought to life. So for me, my starting point is going to be in a solution. The key element with all of this is ensuring that you have a table that you can then create the chart on. And those charts are then consolidated or, or brought together into dashboards and you can bring in charts from multiple tables into a dashboard. Likewise, which I'll show you in a moment, we can also bring Power BI reports into those dashboards. If I start off in my solution, I have a number of tables available. Here I've got my table called asset. And if I want to come into here and create a chart, all I need to do is go to charts. We have one already called number of assets, but in this instance, we're gonna create a brand new chart. By selecting new chart, it's going to open a new window and there's going to be an interface which allows us to select a number of attributes and also provide a preview allowing us to see that that visualization in real time in this instance i'm going to count up the number of assets and walk you through a couple of other uh, charts or, or visualizations that you can bring into your app the first thing we need to do is add a name so here i'm going to call this asset information at the bottom here, we have our legend. And essentially, underneath this element, this is what's going to go away and, and calculate the, the value that's in our chart. So if I come into here and put in name, the aggregation will show up on the right here. What you'll notice is that although it's not very easy to see, based on the type of information you have in this drop down, depends on which one of these you can select. Unfortunately, it does show everything on here and it doesn't make it obvious. But for things like text, it's going to be a count. So here I may want to count up everything or count up things that aren't empty. If instead I had on here details such as a, a, a currency or an amount, I could go through and do a sum or max or min. There's a number of options there. But in my instance, I'm just going to do a count. Underneath, I can add in all other, other metrics that I can add onto my chart. But in my instance, I'm just going to leave that for now. At the bottom here, we have our axis. So this is how we may categorize that information. And again, if we're looking at things like line charts, we may want to put a date onto here. In my instance, I'm going to come to here and choose location. And by adding that location drop down against my chart, our visualization will render. And you can see here that on the left hand side, we have a count of asset, which will give us it by name. And on the bottom here, we have location. And again, if I wanted to, I could add in more information to really refine that visualization. At the top, you can see we have different types of charts that we can bring together. Column is, column is probably the most popular one, uh, but obviously you've got things like line charts in here as well to demonstrate how that can look. If I go to a line chart, although this isn't the best way of showing this data because it's all categoric, if I was to change the axis to maybe when it was created, so record created on, you can start playing around with the different values on here and we can see that it loads up on the bottom there obviously we don't have too much data again other fields are available here so again you've got things like description but usually you can have some sort of combo box or choice that allows us to to group these together status might be another good example you can see that there are a number of charts to choose from i urge you to play around with them there's loads of information online that explains what these do in more detail once you're happy with this, save and close, and that will take you back to your solution, where you'll see your charts displayed against the table. To then add those into a dashboard, if you go to your dashboards and create a new dashboard, you've got a number to choose from. If you wanted to make use of your charts, you should choose any of the top four. If you want to embed with Power BI, select Power BI Embedded. When it comes to adding charts into a dashboard, I'm going to open up one that I made earlier. This will open up a similar window. And here we've got a number of blocks where we can add in our charts. And by selecting the insert chart, it's going to go through, allow you to select your table. From your table, choose your chart. So in this instance, if I look for assets, I can configure the view. And I've got a number of charts available by selecting number of assets that would add it into 
that area of the report. Once I'm happy with this, I can save. In my instance, I'm going to close. And you're now ready to add that into your model driven app. Now, one key thing to note here, if as you're creating your, your model driven app, if we actually jump into it and demonstrate it, as you're coming through into here to add new dashboards, it's just a case of adding a new dashboard, clicking next, selecting the dashboard that you've just created. However, what you might see is that as you're going through and adding your dashboard, when you actually go to play the application, so when you save and publish, if you don't publish all customizations in the environment, your dashboard will not show. Just a quirk of using the, the data first backend. Once that's all published, you're ready to save, publish the model driven app. You're then ready to, to play around with, with that information. If I jump into then playing this app, I can then go through and select my charts using the drop down at the top. So here I can select multiple dashboards. I've only got the one in at the moment. I can see my charts available to me here. But also if I jump into, let's say the assets table, I can show charts specifically in that table. And by going through, I can then select if there are multiple charts, I can change these out. So that's it. That is how you create charts and dashboards for model driven apps. Now with a step further that you can take, and that is by using Power BI. This is a easy enough step where I can come into here. I can add additional dashboards if I wish. In my instance, I'm gonna go through and add a new page. I'm gonna add a dashboard. If I go next, as I scroll down to the bottom, if we had any Power BI dashboards, we could choose it from this stage. Those dashboards are created in exactly the same way as you would do any other dashboard by going back into your solution creating a new dashboard and choosing Power BI Embedded. And as you're going through and selecting these dashboards, you've got a number to choose from. Here I can go through and select an environment. And if there are any reports available in that environment, I could bring those through. So that's it. End-to-end -end charts and dashboards embedded into model-driven apps. Hope you enjoyed. Any questions, leave them in the comments below.